Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick9G. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about and looking at Hogan's Heroes. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget, if you do like the content, if you do like what you see right here, the best way to let me know and the best way to help my channel grow is to hit that thumbs up button and to subscribe. Let's get right to it. We're going to be talking about a very interesting topic. I posted not too long ago a video on why Hogan's Heroes was so popular and still is popular to this day. And I was pretty surprised at the comments, people mentioning the movie Stalag 17. Now, what is the relationship between Stalag 13, of course from Hogan's Heroes, and Stalag 17 from the movie starring Bill Holden? Well, I'll tell you right here in this video. If you're unfamiliar with Hogan's Heroes, it was a sitcom taking place in the 60s and 70s, going back to World War II, focusing on the life of the prisoner of war camp for the allies that was put on by the German soldiers. I will call them Krauts for the sake of this video, just to avoid any issues. And the Krauts, I do want to differentiate from the German civilians themselves that are portrayed in the show. This video will focus on Stalag 17 from the perspective of Stalag 13, so I want to make that very clear. Now, Stalag 17, if you don't know, was a movie concerned with the activities of American prisoners of war held in the German camp. But unlike Hogan's Heroes, that was a comedy, Stalag 17 was a serious drama with undertones here and there that were comedic at times. The plot centered around the prisoners' discovery that there is a spy among them who had been informing the Germans of escape plans. The story bears a likeness to the initial episode of Hogan's Heroes, which had the men discrediting a German spy who was planted amongst the prisoners. Now, a very popular misconception, one that I saw in the comments of my previous video before, is that Hogan's Heroes was adapted from this film, Stalag 17. Now, there were slight similarities between the two. It was not, may I repeat, not the case that they were related. The authors of the play in which the film Stalag 17 was based on were convinced that Hogan's Heroes was plagiarized from their work. So they filed a lawsuit against CBS, who was the basic owner of Hogan's Heroes. The version of the film was a tremendous success, and Bill Holden won an Academy Award for his performance. Now, Bob Crane, who of course played Robert Hogan, said that his character was based on James Garner's role in the 1963 film The Great Escape, which also starred Steve McQueen. Now looking at a very important similarity between Hogan's Heroes and Stalag 17 is that the main guard in both pieces was named Sergeant Schultz. Now Richard Powell, who rewrote the pilot, said that he created the Schultz character himself and that he did not read or even see the movie Stalag 17. He continued that Sergeant Schultz was a character that he invented and he took the name from the Jack Benny film To Be or Not To Be. The Schultz character was important to the sitcom because there was a go between necessary between the prisoners and Clink. Now there is an agreement by Powell that it probably wasn't the best idea to name his Sergeant Schultz the same as the movie 17, but hey, it just happened. The authors of Stalag 17 filed a lawsuit in 1967 against CBS and Bing Crosby Productions. The alleged reason was that Stalag 13 was a ripoff of Stalag 17. Co-creator of Hogan's Heroes, Albert Ruddy, said that the charge was ridiculous. The playwrights themselves asked for an injunction against the broadcast of the series until the case was settled, but this was denied. The case did not go to trial until after the series ended its original run. Ed Fellman, the producer, creators Al Ruddy and Bernie Fine and writer Richard Powell were subpoenaed as witnesses. Feldman recalls that they kept asking Ed that if he had read Stalag 17, and he said that he had not. Then they asked him where he got the word Stalag, but of course Stalag was a well-known term. Now this is what Ruddy said about the lawsuit. The trial was about one year after the show. He was in New York working on The Godfather, and he had to go downtown to appear as one of the witnesses. The suit itself was against CBS, but they were involved because they claimed that there was collusion with CBS to cheat them. The outcome of the trial was unbelievable. The jury decided in favor of the Stalag 17 authors. What happened next was pretty mind-blowing. It was a bench reversal. Now, a bench reversal takes place when the judge believes that the jury did not do their job, that there was not sufficient evidence to justify their decision, so he overturns that decision. 
Now, once a judge issues a bench reversal, there is no turning it around and there was never any appeal. So on the side of our buddies, the ones in Stalag 13, the actors as well as the producers and writers, there was no plagiarism that took place. But of course, Stalag 17 says that that is incorrect. What do you guys and gals think? I would love to know and love to hear down in the comments below. I do appreciate you watching and supporting my channel. It is you, the viewer, the subscriber, the one who supports me, who allows me to do and make these videos. If it weren't for you, I couldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. So thank you wholeheartedly. We'll see you next time, guys and gals. Hopefully you're always bettering yourself. And most importantly, be hopeful. <laughs>